told you about that last week. To this week, we're going to break all of those rules and we're going to clash all our colors together and make something absolutely fabulous. Welcome to the studio, it's Froyle here. I'm so glad you've joined me. This week, I break all of my rules. <laughs> But don't worry, we're going to finish like a professional. You're going to love this. Look at all the prints I still have left. <laughs> I'm feeling very feisty today. I think we should break all the rules and put all of the patterns together and let's clash all the colors and see what incredible creative masterpiece we can come up with. Right, I have another 12 inch or 30 centimeter square canvas beautiful little ones sitting around in my studio. And didn't Picasso say to learn the rules like a pro so you could break them like an artist? <laughs> yes, I'm feeling feisty today. Now you learn all the rules. I told you about that last week. To this week, we're going to break all of those rules and we're going to clash all our colors together and make something absolutely fabulous. So I've covered the whole front with the fabulous Liquitex Matte Gel Medium because that's what I like to use. And let's see what we're going to use first. Right, we're not thinking too much because thinking will just get us into trouble. <laughs> so I'm going to pick beautiful papers up and put them on and if I don't like it then I'll just have to deal with it. I'm leaving the paper to go over the edge so I can tuck it under. Showed you how to do that last week. Now if you didn't see last week's episode you need to because you need to know the important rules. <laughs> Five steps of how to create your fabulous masterpiece with your glorious jelly print and it does work really well unless you're feeling really feisty and you don't want to follow the rules which is how I'm feeling today. So today we're going to break all the rules and do something a little bit unorthodox. No idea how it's going to turn out but we're going to put all of these fabulous patterns together. Who told you that you couldn't? Yeah that's right who are they anyway they talk too much they say this and they say that <laughs> well not today baby cakes we ain't listening to nobody we're just gonna not even think about it and we're gonna create and we're gonna break all the rules that i taught you last week because that's the kind of mood i'm in and we'll just see what kind of mess i can create then you can re-watch last week's and go, see, you should have done it like that. <laughs> ah, I love it. Righto, that's on, that's on. Didn't even think about it. Not even gonna think about it. And this is going to go right here. Maybe we'll push it over the side. I like having it on the side. Always looks so much better when you wrap your papers around the side. Oops, can't tell you that because I told you that last week and we're breaking all the rules. <laughs> All right, you can do what you like, but I think it looks better. <laughs> so I'm putting it around the side. Just loving these colors. Look at them. They're absolutely beautiful. Now, if you want to know how I made these gorgeous prints, have a look at the week before last week, because yes, I've been on a bit of a tangent. <laughs> We've been having a bit of a roll. We made collage last week, but it was the week before that I actually printed them in a bit of a printing frenzy. So check that out if you want to know how to make all these glorious colors and textures. It really was a whole lot of fun. Right, so I'm just wrapping it around the side because I can't help myself. It looks beautiful. We need to keep that rule. Okay, it just looks so much better. <laughs> What about this piece? Oh, this is one of my favorite pieces. I love this piece. I think I might just give it a bit of a snip across there and then put one of them, maybe that, no, this one for sure, for sure, across here like that. Yes, I'm loving it, looks amazing. Now, don't panic too much because if I get too crazy, 
you know, I can always pull it off again or I can go over it with another piece. So, you know, it'll all be okay. Don't panic too much. <laughs> They're all such fabulous pieces. They're on the Japanese rice paper, so they're very soft and luxurious. They're easy to glue down and they're just beautiful. Yay! Now, did someone tell you you shouldn't put pink and orange together? I'm pretty sure they would have. <laughs> pretty sure someone's told me that before, but today we're not listening. We're just going to put it down as we pick it up and touch it with our fingers and then you watch, we'll be able to pull something together. It's going to be amazing. Don't stress too much. It'll come right in the end. Look at that piece. One of my favorites, yay. Love that piece. It's absolutely beautiful. Just make sure you're pushing out the air bubbles when you put your prints down. Because otherwise, you'll have big lumps later when it does actually dry. Right, air bubbles are out. Yay. Now, what about this piece? Yes. Yes, is all I'm going to say about that. I think we should cut one to go across there. Oh man, this is so fun. It's really entirely liberating. You seriously have to try it. Just break all the rules, baby, and just go for it. Right, that's going to go on there, I'm thinking. I might put a bit over here on this side of the edge. Yes. Here's all I'm gonna say about that is yes. Right there, that's going to look beautiful. Wow, it comes together really fast when you don't think too much. <laughs> what do you think, what do you think? It's looking very pop art in the colors and the patterns. It's not too bad, it's exactly how I'm feeling today. Feisty. <laughs> That's how it feels. That's how it looks. I think we need something there. Not that one. It's the same. What about this beautiful? Oh, man, I love this. This is just beautiful. Yes, I think we should put some of this on there. Which section of it, but? Because look at the different parts of the print. It's just beautiful. Do we want that side or do we want that side? Definitely this side. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and how far do we want it to the edge? No, I don't think I want it too far. I think I just want like a piece here in that middle section there, something like that. That'll work. And then what about this piece? It's been floating around on my desk here. I really wanted to use it last week, busting to use it last week, and I didn't. So I'm thinking we're using it this week and we're gonna put it there. Yes. Loving it, absolutely loving it. See what happens when you don't think and you break all the rules. <laughs> you create amazing things. Oh yeah, I like it up that way. Okay, I'll stick these two pieces down. I'm going to let it dry and then we can reevaluate if I've been a little too hasty <laughs> in my construction today and what else would we like to add to it. Now it's not entirely dry, but it's dry enough. And I'm feeling like we need to add something a little graphic because it's just so fun. And so <laughs> I'm thinking we need some numbers on it. And clearly this is a loved stencil. No idea where I got it from. Not a clue, been around for a really long time. Clearly I've used it for spray painting. So I'm thinking let's put some numbers there and you know, we don't want to add anything too subdued. Let's go with stencil butter in marigold. <laughs> Look at that color. So I get my stencil butter from Jackie's Craft Store here in beautiful New Zealand, but I'm pretty sure you can source this online at Amazon with no problem. And this is just a really fun idea, but I've only got one shot really at making it look good. So I better not stuff it up. <laughs> Cause I've only got one of those fabulous circles. Righto, here we go. I hope you're holding your breath for me because we got one shot of getting it right. Well, I was holding my breath. 
Righto, let's see what we've got. Ta-da, ta-da! I love it. I just love it. That's just making me so happy. What a magnificent colour. Look at that colour. Man, I love stencil butter. I mean, yes, you can mix all sorts of mediums with your acrylic paints to thicken them up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, but hello. Open the pot and there we go. No mixing. Pull it out. It's like magic. I love it. It's just a little bit raised being the stencil butter. The colour's got a little tinge of metallic in it. Makes me happy. The orange is beautiful. Don't let people tell you what you can and can't do with your creativity. Basically, that's my message this week. I always have a message. There's always something that I'm very passionate about sharing with you. And this week, it's all about don't let other people tell you what you can and can't do with your beautiful art and your creative expression or who you want to be or how you want to live or how you want to look or how you want to dress. Because, baby, it's a really big universe and we're not meant to all be the same. Loving this colour, marigold, beautiful. That looks fabulous. Little pop of colour, something a little bit graphic there on the glorious shapes and patterns. I think it's gorgeous. You know what we could do? I think we should give it a varnish. I think we should finish like a professional, seeing as we started like a crazy maniac, I think. <laughs> I think we should finish like a professional. Let's let it dry and we'll give it a varnish. We might even tape and string it so I can show you how I finish my paintings all ready to hang on the wall. Yippee. Right, so I'm really happy with my collage. <laughs> I just love it. Look how beautiful the numbers turned out in the glorious stencil butter. My mum thinks it's a little wild. Perhaps she feels it's got too much clashing colour on it. But do I care? No. That's how I'm feeling today. Now I'm going to show you how to finish like a professional. First of all, you have to sign your artwork. I like to sign mine at the bottom right, but that's not mandatory. Sometimes I sign the left if the right doesn't have a good spot. And I like to use fluid paint, usually bronze with a very fine liner brush. But you could also use a fine pen, Posca pen, fine line marker, anything really that's going to put your mark or signature on your artwork and you need to sign it because it's an expression of who you are. You've taken all this time and poured your heart out onto your painting surface. You may as well own it. It's all right if no one else likes it. That's just how it goes. Now, I like to use a Tilio varnish because I lived in Australia all my life and I'm used to the Australian brand, but you don't have to use this kind of a brand. And I love using a gloss varnish. Now, when it comes to papers, I don't always use a gloss varnish. In fact, I only gloss them up if I feel like it, I want it shiny, or if there's a strong painterly surface. Like this painting here, see how beautiful this looks all glossed up with a varnish. It just brings out all the depth of the colours of the acrylic paint and the inks and it looks absolutely amazing. Well, I think so anyway. This one here I recently varnished and it has some papers on it some printed materials and I glossed it up because I wanted all those rich tones to come through. But often I don't gloss them if they have textured papers. So this one from last week, I'm probably not going to gloss it up because the papers are so textural, you'll lose that beautiful quality about these particular papers. And I don't really wanna do that. So I might use a satin I do like the satin varnish because it's not so glossy and it's not perfectly matte flat. Of course, you can just leave your collages. You definitely don't have to varnish them. I just like to varnish them because it finishes them off. It seals everything up. It also has a UV protection over them. So, you know, you just want to give them the best possible chance of staying as beautiful as they are when you create them. So because this collage does have a lot of paper, but the papers are all completely covered in acrylic paint and I'm feeling feisty. So we're going with gloss, baby. We're going to make her shine and I think she's pretty. I like to use a brush on varnish. I have tried spray varnishes in my lifetime. I don't personally like them. 
I like to brush it on. I like to make sure all the papers are covered and everything is sealed. I put it in a disposable plate, nice soft brush, and away you go. It's really very, very easy. I give it one all over coat like this, and then a soft run over the top to make sure it all got covered. I do also like to give the sides just a bit of a wipe so that if any has dribbled down the side, I can just catch it and wipe it with my brush. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then I'm going to let this completely dry and then do a second coat over it. It's a great protection. It looks beautiful, nice and shiny, and it brings out all the richness of the colors. So I'll do the second coat and then I'll show you how I like to tape and string them, getting them ready to hang. Right, look how beautiful my collage is. I absolutely love it. I do love glossy, I like shiny, and I like bling. So, you know, it suits me to put the gloss varnish on. All the sides are wrapped around. That's how I like it because I think they look fabulous. When it's hanging on the wall, you see the sides of the painting. So all of it really matters. It's all signed looking professional and finished. So let's get it ready to hang. And it doesn't matter what my mum says, I love it. <laughs> it makes me happy. Okay, the colors might be clashing. I don't care. I think it looks great. Now, the first thing you wanna do is put down a beautiful, clean, white tablecloth. Well, that's what I do anyway. See, no paint, nothing sticky, no varnish, no leftovers, nothing on here that's going to be transferred onto my beautiful collage once I turn it over. After all that hard work, you don't want to then wreck your collage because something was left on your table. Nice, clean and soft tablecloth ready to go. Now, this is just what I like to do. Of course, you don't have to, but I like to tape my paintings at the back because they look really professional. They look finished. It just makes them neat and clean and that's how I do all of my artworks. Now, if you're interested in any of my original paintings, I have a massive November sale happening right now and you will find an absolute bargain. There are some beautiful paintings on canvas, this size, nice and small on sale. There's also some fabulous new artworks on paper, which are a lot less in postage. And if you're in beautiful God bless America, then the prices are going to be half as much for you because of the New Zealand dollar. Go and have a look at froilart.com. Buy yourself an early Christmas present because they're all originals. They won't be repeated. Only one of beautiful artworks and you're going to love it. See how good that looks taped like that. I know I'm fussy. I like things to look neat. Now, you wanna check that it's up the right way before you start putting your screws and strings on because otherwise, yeah, it's a problem when you're trying to hang it. Now, the measurement doesn't matter too much. I roughly go down almost a third and put a mark. It doesn't matter too much what the measurement is, but you do have to have the same measurement both sides or else that's not going to work for you. I have some fabulous white cord. I buy my cords and my little D-rings from a framing shop. I order it online through their website. It turns up on my doorstep. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. If you're in Australia or in New Zealand, you could always go down to Mitre 10 or your hardware store. You want to measure the amount approximately that you need, leaving a little bit extra to tie the knot. So you can get cords and strings and D-rings from really anywhere, depending on where you live in the world. I like shopping online, turns up on my doorstep, the courier loves me. Right, tie it in a knot. I like to tie it twice. Just double check that you cut enough string before you double knot it. Yes, all these mistakes have been done before. I've done possibly everything wrong at some stage. 
So I think it's nice just to share a little bit of wisdom. Right, now I like to tape my little string on the ends again because it just looks neat. I like it neat, I like it tidy, looks more professional. I have had a lot of exhibitions in my lifetime. I've been playing this game for over 30 years. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff. So this is just how I normally work with my paintings, especially if you're going to exhibit or sell them, you really want to do things properly. That's going to look fabulous. Now I have this little electronic screwdriver. Yes, it's a lot of fun because it's just faster. Basically, you don't have to use an electronic screwdriver. You might like screwing it in by hand. But, you know, if it's going to be easier and faster, I'm going to find a way. Little screw in the side like that, that side. If your string is too long, you can give it a twist. Just it shortens it up and makes it a little tighter. Um, and then when you're going to hang it on the wall, if you need to move it up or down because the hook's not in the right place, you can always untie the string and gives yourself a little bit more room. I find that giving it a little twist of the cord can just tighten it up a little. And then you just have to hold it in place while you screw the other side in. Yeah, it can be a little tricky, but it's worth it to have it just that little bit tighter so it sits flush on the wall. Yay for the electronic screwdriver. I love it, it just makes things easy. <laughs> Beautiful, both sides, nice and tight, but not too tight, but just so it's firm and it's gonna hang nicely on the wall like that. Yay. Now, I have these little black bump-ons. Oh, there's only two left. Felt pads, get them from the hardware store. You can pick them up when you get your string and your D-rings, easy peasy. I just like to put them on the bottoms here because sometimes the paintings, if they're wet along the edge, they can leave a little bit of a mark on your wall. And if you're renting, you know, people don't seem to like you leaving little marks on their walls. So, couple of little bump-ons, they're good. They support the painting against the wall. It's just nice, I know. And then of course, you've got to put one of your stickers on. What do you mean you don't have stickers? <laughs> you can make stickers, they're really easy. <laughs> put a sticker on the corner. Oh, the label of the painting. Oh, I haven't printed it out yet, but that's where the label of the painting would go. And there you are, beautiful, fabulous collage of glorious colors. That makes me happy. All we have to do now is hang it on the wall. Thanks for joining me today. Wasn't that a whole lot of fun? I know, the collage turned out beautiful, even if I say so myself. <laughs> I hope you learned some great tips for stringing and hanging your collage and your artwork, I'm sure will look absolutely beautiful. Now, don't forget you can find more information in the description under the video. There's links and discount codes. And I'll leave you with this video because I know it's gonna help with your creative adventure. See you next time in the studio.